today. <laughs> Hi, Susan. Hi. The great Susan Young, my friend Hi. and a very Paul. excellent <laughs> comedi uh, comedian. Comedian. I'm going to be great. <laughs> poet. I'm going crazy. Ah, a poet, a beautiful poet, oh, and uh, a filmmaker, and a uh, resident Lower East Side activist from Chinatown yeah, and Brooklyn, yeah, and all good. those kind of things. Set up. Yeah, a great woman. Thank you very much for joining us, Susan Young, on our show. Let them talk. Great to have you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, what else is new? <laughs> we'll fix that opening on the YouTube version. <laughs> oh, edit it? Yes. Well, later on. Oh, great. <laughs> but right now, I this is live, and we're here live in mm -hmm. all of New York City, or at least in Manhattan, and around the world. So welcome to Let Them Talk. Uh, Susan, so we met right. because you were involved with various uh, poetry groups that I've been following, and we've been had a number of shows talking to poets here and um, it if writers. Your poetry and writers poets. fascinates me mm. and uh, and you're a writer and a poet as well as many other things and uh, I'd like to know a little bit about your work and about yourself you're are you a lifelong New Yorker no actually I was born in Portland Oregon right. which is a great country I think our home state for mm -hmm. for um, its diversity and I guess friendliness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a friendly place, right? Yeah. Out yeah. there in the. I the, mean, people m the probably River. make fun of it because it's. Um, oh, does it rain a lot? No, it feels like you get the four seasons: fall is fall, winter is winter with snow. Spring is flowers, and summer is. Mm -hmm. You sometimes get the heat waves, but right. during those days. Um, we used to go out in the fields and pick strawberry beans and other things as a livelihood. For so, the what winter. brought you from idyllic oh boy. Portland to New York City? You know, gritty, urban New York well, City. Well, let's say it's the history of the Chinese in America. Really? Yeah, part of it is. I mean, my grandfather was a laundryman in New York City for 40 years and. Boy, did he complain about that. <laughs> mm -hmm, really. And um, so I got, well, at the age of 10, we were mm -hmm. celebrating our 100th centennial of Oregon State, and then coming down to, I mean, coming into New York City in 1960 as a family reunion, because that's when the Exclusion Act of 1867 Right. Or what so is that? allowed the, ex the exclusion act that excluded Chinese immigrants from coming right, to America. Right, and the quota to um, I mean fulfill the quota like six hundred mm -hmm. Asians, which includes I guess the Japanese and the Chinese mm -hmm. at the time. Maybe. By the way, Susan, you spell your last name Y U N G, right? Right. Y U N G. Just want to we want to fix that, so make sure it's right. So go right ahead. Well, it's on my birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the, the, uh, you got my parents were matched um, due to various reasons, and um, but I didn't find out the history until my father died at the age of fifty. That um, he um, at the age of fifty that um, we had a great grandfather worked on the railroad. So like, so this is the Chinese. Your family is the history of Chinese America. Definitely All right. I think so. I Going mean, down yeah. to the roots. And it, it's only two sentences in the art history, I mean, mm -hmm. in the history books, but... Um, Do they work on the railroad and build the... the well, the, 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 the whole history is emerging slowly but surely. Some of the guys in Chinatown are in this Wheels on Fire series about building the railroad. Uh, it's called Wheels on Fire. Is it? I don't know. Hell I on Fire? Okay, and that's a program that's going to be going. That's into on the AMC. Oh, I see. Right, so right. like you know, some of our um, some uh. um, the youth have become little uh, mm -hmm. stars mm -hmm. in the realm of Hollywood. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about it. So after you came to New York, how old were you when you came to New Ten. York City? Ten, up in the Bronx for two years, and then Chinatown finally and garment workers and restaurants and a lot of, mm -hmm. I would say, oppressions. So you're along, when this, is, this program is watched by a lot of people in East Village and Lower East Side, yeah, yeah. right? So uh, those are people who somewhat or should be sensitive to the fact that we're talking to somebody who's 
you know, really a pioneer down here, you know, I long before all these uh, yuppies and hipsters and others, even, even the squatters and radicals, you were here yeah. already organizing and you were working with the restaurant workers and other groups, right, doing right. political work. You were political but at this, But at the present now situation, there's no prevention of gentrification. But the memories we have of the struggle still prevalent in my mind. <laughs> okay, I bet. I bet. And essentially, we'll talk about that a little bit. So, how did you transfer? I mean, was was being a writer a goal of your life, or a poet, or no. a fiction writer, or nonfiction, anything like that? No. Well, I, I plan to be an artist. Mm -hmm. So, in order to be an artist, there are seven arts to fulfill in mm -hmm. the realm of being an yeah. artist. So, it's like I usually say, if I can't afford paints, I can afford paper and a pen, mm -hmm. and so I can write, and that's one the yeah. process, uh, and then reading and, and learning history, historical things, and um, mm -hmm. being able to travel and see a lot of activities. Mm -hmm. right. And what we're, we're going to see, there's a video that's up on the, uh, we're going to play it right now. It's up in the um, room there. It's, it's, it's the short one, the three-minute video. Yeah. It's yeah. about three minutes and 20 seconds. And what's it called, the YouTube video? What's it called? Democracies in Chinatown, 1974 to 1994. And it's about uh, Margaret Chen, her first, uh, the interview after her first attempt to become a city councilwoman. And it took her about, was it 35 years, I think, mm -hmm. to become a city councilwoman, but then now I consider this first DVD video I made uh, a sort of tongue-in-cheek, mm -hmm. because uh, one of her first jobs, once she became city councilwoman, was to uh, eliminate the number of chickens and ducks hanging in the windows because of the health hazards. Like, instead of 20 ducks and chickens hanging in the window, you got to have about 10 or 5. So I noticed so there's been a reduction. So now you got to have a cop, the cop patrolling the chickens. Uh, the why window. do you think she would do that? What was the purpose for... Uh, well, I would think it's to uh, ple uh, please the her other co-political because they were, people were upset and complaining about seeing dead animals in the window. And oh, is that why? The pet Maybe. People? I don't know. That's what I assumed. I don't know. I mean, it's been there you for know, animal rights is huge, you 50 know. years. Yeah, right. I mean, you know. Right, right. And so, so it's a so cultural on. conflict between some yeah, folks. Yeah, and so she conceded yeah. with this first, and then there were other issues. Uh -huh. and the, the same thing happened with Mayor de Blasio and the horses in the park, and of course he thought, oh. you know. But then let's talk about, like, w how... Even though there is an organization called Chinatown in um, a working working group in China Chinatown's working group, and why they're so insular that they don't include Lower East Side. When I was sitting at their meetings for three years, okay. and then now they in are including Lower East Side because now the research is done and. And gentrification is going ahead, mm -hmm. if you understand that. Because one, there used to be an Asian arts center, but then the person got evicted, and now there's a hotel. Okay. So is that symbolic of what art, the Chinese think about art? Is it? it I think so. I mean, uh, if that so or, or the outside right. world, I mean, because Canal Street, but now... Chinese Times expanded to Little Italy, and every group, ethnic group, is surviving with their own individual museums. And then it's like, who controls that? Because uh. I go to open mics, and they used to have it at Chinese in um, uh, Chinese Museum in America, no, mm -hmm. Museum of Chinese in America. Sure. And now they don't have it because then the kids in Chinatown will be speaking up with their stories that some people don't want to hear, mm -hmm. if you understand that right. factor. Right. All right, so we're going to play this clip about uh, about the history of Chinatown, and then it's about three and a half minutes long, so the trailer to a longer movie. Oh, yes, and plus and I would right. include the uh, amnesia of how we demonstrated to have construction workers in, I mean, Asians. Okay. Construction work. All right, let's play and then we'll come back. We'll be back in a minute. Like, I think we grew up in Chinatown. Um, My 
first almost, photo. you know, to get uh, uh, at the same era, <laughs> in the same era. Well, I came when I was nine years old. And then you kind of like want to stay down there and continue working in the community and things? Well, well, the thing is that I, I made a commitment to my community. I mean, I grew up here, and I think there's still a lot that needs to be done. I think, well, you know, I kind of started out when the um, Vietnam War, anti-Vietnam War demonstrations, I started to go to that, and then graduate from college, and I needed a job. And I was working for the city under Mayor Lindsay, and it was like a, probably a good starting job for an artist, but, you know, two years you get bored, and then you get involved with the city politics, and mm -hmm. it's like, Wait a moment, something's wrong here. And then I started to, um, and then I started like working with some of these in their um, struggle for democratic rights, which is pretty, which is pretty amazing for me to see. Uh, uh, being in a microscopic community in Chinatown, New York City, and then Philippines, and seeing a whole country, a whole nation, do the same type of policies, and I was just overwhelmed with such uh, feelings. <laughs> that was kind of an exciting moment, I think, to see, even to see a country change its policies mm -hmm. and its struggle. And I think the rationale of the population to understand what oppression is all about. So, tell us a little bit about that. What was that? What, what was that video that we just saw? That's you, first of all, back thirty-five the, years, ninety-four, ninety-four, the twenty-year. Right. Was, that was uh, in nineteen ninety-four. This was this and was made, and then seventy-four with the Confucius Plaza demonstration, which is not included. Was that program, by the way, here at MNN? Was it? Yeah, I made it during. I was learning. In 94, I guess, was the year that th they mm -hmm. opened up for community mm -hmm. um, involvement. Involvement. Right. And so that so we were seeing a show, a program that was actually made at Eminem Studios at that time, not here, but at another location. Right. right? W was um, through uh, Woman Make Movies and um, I guess that was it. Yeah, Woman right. Make Movies. Right, 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 right. Or Dark World Newsreel. Mm -hmm. If you've heard of them, so right. Susan Young, you that that's wonderful, and I, I'm glad you were you were you know archiving that material and showing us the the struggle and the roots of the struggle in Chinatown back in mm -hmm. the 1970s. And it, since it was a microcosm, and then going to the Philippines during Marcos dictatorship and seeing a whole country in the democratic movement that mm -hmm. um, that yeah. probably is now still struggling for its own mm -hmm. recognition, right. and. Um, so that experience of China uh, microcosm, which is still in mm -hmm. its, as I said, struggles. Sure. So in in other respect, I mean, I had to expand myself <laughs> into other communities, which is Lower East Side, because it has very diverse mm -hmm. and creative moments. Mm -hmm. And um, 
The Lower East Side is a different place from Chinatown. Definitely. I and mean, it was like a war zone. In the, um, there were a lot of Vietnam veterans returning from, so they... They were living in the Lower East Side. Well, coming, hanging out and, yeah. and running around Chinatown also, but um, I had to deal with some of those issues. <laughs> okay. Now, when did you decide you wanted to write poetry, or did you always write poetry? Well, I guess about 79. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we had a, um, we expanded our grassroots organization called Basement Workshop, which into, um, into Soho, and um, that's where a lot of, um, we, we had an 8,000 square feet raw studio, mm -hmm. I mean raw space that we converted into a library, a dark room when you had use, mm -hmm. uh, enlargers and the whole chemical process. Right. Um, great performance space, a woodwork, <coughs> yeah. boy and girl bathroom, shower, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean luxury mm -hmm. of all things and mm -hmm. 8,000 and um, getting the floors shellacked and everything. Uh -huh. so, so that lasted for three years because our money ran out after right. $100,000 spending. So did you want to read us one of your poems? Oh, okay. So this is one, the first one I written in 781. It's called Could Not Hear Charlie Parker One Day, because I usually uh, paint in mm -hmm. here in jazz in my sure. little apartment in Brooklyn. Okay. Park Slope. <laughs> we once moved, taming and riding the north winds with railroad ties unbounded. Saturday spring morning, morning the lost and on the loose, Kenny Rogers, the gambler, playing, and I combing my wash tango hair while the child plays in the backyard. The con 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 confusion blood that nobody could comply in wisdom's unknown. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So that <laughs> Gives you a little background. Right, right. So that was your first poem? One the first, yeah. One of the first ones, right. Yeah, I think uh, you want to try the later one? Yes, yeah, so let's try later. All right, this one I call Work in Progress because of what's happening situation now. Uh, before Iraq War, before World Trade Center, before homelessness, before, before unemployment, before Tiananmen Square Massacre, before the Sandinista and Noriega War, before Marcos' dictatorship by being Ronald Reagan's puppet, before the Confucius Plaza demonstrations for workers' rights, before civil rights movement, before Hiroshima bomb, before the freedom of slavery, the Civil War, we are now there. Death in wars. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. No, thank Susan you. Susan Young. That's great. Mm. You're a great poet. And I love your work. That's why you're here. I mean, because I saw your well, work. Well, I don't know, but it's, it gets controversial, I think, sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you've like you been through the hip, hippie area, er, era. I mean, I've been to Woodstock, and I was probably one of only, I mean, among the Asians or Chinese in Chinatown. The original 1969 Woodstock. Is yeah, because I had to hear the music mm -hmm. then and there and it was a great adventure you know in certain respects as much as like being in the Philippines <laughs> so you w there were there other Asian folks at Woodstock that you run well into? my sister went there earlier so it was you and your sister well no w separately. separately she came back she she went wh while it was raining and storming so she came back all she didn't like it. Roughed up. No, yeah. well, I guess she she didn't mind. Right. I mean, you yeah, know, right. we were young, young at the time, so right. it was like. And then I went on the third days, which was more sunny and so on, and just to hear Santana and Richie Haven and a lot of the musicians at that. Especially, I mean, it's kind of funny. The date that I had had promised his mom he had to be back at, and he was older than me, <laughs> by midnight. <laughs> 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 That's when Janice came on. <laughs> it's right. like I wanted to stay. Did you stay for her? No, we had to. I mean, he had the car. Okay. So then we had to drive it back. 
you know, right. I didn't uh, well, you know, I was talking about this. It's a thing where people feel they have to leave early before the event is over because of the traffic in the parking lot. Well, we had to walk five miles right. back. Yeah, I just never understand it. If you're going to come, you should watch it to the end and not leave early because you think oh, you're going to. Oh, he eat. promises mommy. Right, well. Yeah. What are you going to do? And you're at Woodstock where everybody's like smoking dope and like hanging out More having sex less. and walking around naked. <laughs> you're worried about what mommy's going to think. Right? He, yeah, really. <laughs> I love that. All right, this is Susan Young, and we're, she's a poet and a filmmaker and a writer. And uh, you're going to read us one more poem before we go and play another clip of a uh, video of yours? All right, which one? Any one you want. A beautiful oh, poet. I don't know. I mean, this one's long. Yes, that's a good that one. one. Do a long one. Do a long one. It's the Mini Okubo. Yeah. I mean, you know, she was interned in the camps, and this is my first. After meeting her and encouraging her to um, have a show and with our group, because she kept saying, I'm coming out, I'm coming out. But, you know, I told her, I explained to her that um, I studied art history and we need to, ex you know, the history that we have, we have to explore that history. So, I also I wanted to have permission to show her work in the community. So, it's Mine Okubo, Artist and Citizen 13660. There is another wild-looking thing who has been to Europe on an art scholarship, and she is doing a lot of sketches so that there should be quite a bit of material available for any future studies of this mess. And this was excerpted from the Kikuchi Diary, written by Charles Kikuchi in 1973, who's a Japanese-American sociologist who write about the Japanese-American evacuation of 1942. I told many I'd rather be working in this manner than do any other job. Whose reality do you see? The one who paints and draws, the other who writes and savors the words. How shall we title these drawings? The dreams felt and lived returned to Mene, her mind once dimmed with sadness of evacuation. In four years, in turn, looked at, looks at her paintings said they are bachelors in the shade of the barracks, topaz, maintenance crew replacing sewage pipes, tanferan, and hospital dedication, December 1943, topaz. Birds chirp in the backyard in senseless rhythm as the sun streams from the French door windows. The day's remembrances that made many tell of the barren land, the barracks, the stink of Installing sewage pipes every month, the stink of horse stalls, the watchtower with armed guards, the barbed wires, the shyness of an artist recording with her eyes and with her hands, the brush slowly oozing somber colors. A loner for 30 years briefly relived the horror of the pockmarked camps that defaced the part of history. So that's my radical it, it, Well, you know, that seems so... Uh, you know, appropriate for today because oh, you have uh, the Do Donald Trump t talking about doing the same thing to Muslims in America, ultimately the same thing. He tries to hide it and prettify it, but basically deport Mexicans and, uh -huh. you know, put Muslims in, in camps for their own safety, right? Right. It's pretty much what he's saying, which is, you know, regurgitating what already happened in America, right? Right. The Japanese but then Americans. it took a while. I mean, after mm -hmm. this, there is the movement for the internment um, reparation. Mm -hmm. Reparations for people who were interned. Well, the Japanese Americans, basically. Right. And would and have these gone are not on. Japanese citizens. These are Japanese Americans. They are. American right. citizens, many of whom had children fighting in, in, in Europe. Yeah, for for two infantry. Right. I mean, even my father was in the military, North Africa, as a munition barrier, which is amazing compared to, like, most of the Chinese were either stewards or um, cooks or something else, right, you know. Right. But they actually but used him had, in a combat role. He was, a, yeah. So um, as munition barrier in North Africa. A munitions barrier. Yeah, <laughs> carrying <laughs> for right. the tanks. So right, I mean, right, you know, right. like it's it's amazing. I think how um, he survived. So your father all that. is a is a war hero from World War Two. 
In a way, I mean, it's a private. Oh, yeah, but anybody then, who was in combat is a war hero. Yeah, yeah. By definition. But he, but he didn't want to come to New York, so he'd rather go fishing out west than the pristine forests and stuff uh -huh. like that. Which uh, you don't, uh, you can't blame him. Mm -hmm. And um, and um, so um, yeah. What do you think of uh, Mr. But Trump's pronouncements? I think it's so profound and I can't even sit and watch him talk. I mean, I have to write my own stories of what he's doing with Lower East Side. And oh, his uh, son-in-law. The luxury, whatever. Right. The yeah, that's his son-in-law, right. Trump's son-in-law, oh. who's a, his major campaign is advisor. To it, put luxury condos and housing all projects. All around me. Right? Every time I turn around, there's another one going up. Oh, wow. One on the two yeah. on the corner, one down the street. You know, they get rid of the supermarket. Go shopping at Whole Foods. Dorothy Day's church, married yeah. couple of Christians, a hundred plus year old church ripped down. Oh yeah. And replaced with a concrete, ugly behemoth. Yeah. So they want to eradicate the sort of diverse history that we've came to the Lower right. East Side for. Absolutely. And um, and make it homogenous mm. <laughs> in certain yeah. respect. Well, you know, I don't <laughs> know if you saw the uh, during the convention, um, Rudy no. Giuliani got up there and had the camera in his face, and he said, uh, "We're coming for you." And I didn't think he was coming for. I thought he was coming for for me. <laughs> That's uh, who I think Rudy's coming for. He's coming for us. Any radical, <laughs> right? Right here on the Lower statement. East Side. Right. He's not talking about going after. Well, I understand some he's foreign far powers or fighters or anything. I understand yeah. he's General Vizi. So oh, that's why he family. would yeah. get We've written about the that. Sicilians. H. A. Weberman has written about that extensively. Excellent. I mean, we writing. have that in Chinatown. If you got the On Leong family association, and then there's the hip thing and. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Organized now crime. there are 50, well, sort mm -hmm. of, I mean, they, they do right. family matters. Half a minute to go. Uh, Susan Young, could you tell us how people can, is there a website where people can learn more about your work? Oh, uh, yeah, and a blog. How do people get to S -U -S -A -N -L -Y -U -N -G it? dot com. Susan L. Young, Y-U-N-G yeah. dot com. Yeah. All right, to get more information. Thank you so much for joining us, Susan Young. We'll have you back on to read your poetry and play more of your videos. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll Wonderful. see you next week. Have a nice summer. Stay cool. <laughs> 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 I was like, ah!